All right, how's it going, everybody? I hope you're doing well. This is Oliver Manalise. I'm actually in St. Catharines visiting my good friend, Mike Gillespie. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. I made a big trip just to come out here to chat with my good friend, Mike, to talk a little bit more about himself, share his story, as well as discuss what he's up to and what he's got going on this year. He has a really interesting story, and I think... The transformation, the awareness, and the amount of growth that he's been through for the last couple of years. And if you know him, then you've, you've probably witnessed these changes in him as well. I think it would be very beneficial for you to listen in on some key insights and maybe have a pen and paper with you just for some big ideas and maybe something that uh, some of his stories will pertain to you maybe they'll resonate maybe maybe they won't but uh, nonetheless he's a really awesome guy and uh i think i think this is going to be really a really interesting a really in- interesting talk an in- interesting interview so mike gillespie is happy healthy and wise dot me he is a life strategist out of st Catharines, and he's also a student rental real estate investor Right, coming from the real estate investment world, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy to have you on the show, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming out. I'm looking forward to this. this Thanks for good. coming. I came here. I know. <laughs> I'm thanking you for. Yeah, yeah. I thought I just thought it was really important that people um, get to hear your story because I know that um, some people might not, might not be aware of you uh, right now, and you're you're still you're still uh, coming up in terms of your new coaching and all of that. So I think it's going to be really good for people to get an idea of how you got to that point but first let's um i think let's we should delve into kind of how, how you got to this point I, the, the cool story that i think people need to share they might they may have listened to that first interview that we did which was years ago yeah but uh the story about the beliefs i think that's something that we should really talk about because we were part of a, a group called the real estate investment network and the idea is to have this vision that we have for our life, to put it up on our wall. Maybe you have uh, pictures, writing, big words, or even a whole story about how you envision the outcome of your life. And uh, yeah, so if you can share a little bit about that, I think people might be interested in that story. Yeah, so usually once a year, uh, Rain puts on an event called uh, Acre Weekend. And uh, part of our homework is, we actually do our personal beliefs. So it's basically, you know, where you see yourself. You know, some of the things that you're doing, who you're with, um, basically what you know, the type of person that you're starting to become. So I always found myself redoing this exercise uh, every year at at these Acre events. So, and usually you do it uh, five years. Uh, away so into the future so where do you think you'll be type of thing so um, the, the one year I did it and um, it was actually like a bunch of years ago now so I, I set the date and I wrote out everything and on there the date was set five years in advance and it was interesting because you know I was working in my job and I'm starting to make the transition out of my job I had a couple Um, leaves from work. I had some parental leaves and I had a couple uh, leave of absences. So uh, it was interesting to look at the date of what I put on the one Belize and the last day of my work before my leave of absence coincided pretty much to the day. I think there might have been one day difference. So my last day of work I believe was uh, April 30th, uh, um, I think it was like three, 2012 three, or like, what was it? Uh, 20, it must've been 2011 yeah. ish. Yeah. I think it was in around that year. And yeah, my leave of absence began on May 1st. So it was, <laughs> uh, really weird to kind of look back because I didn't realize it at the time. Um, but when I went back to, you know, look over that exercise and, you know, may, maybe do a couple updates there. I looked at the date and I was like, this is unbelievable. Like it was pretty much to the day. And I had set that 
you know, five years in the past. Mm -hmm. So it, it was pretty cool. It just, uh, it really just shows the power of intention and, you know, Goal knowing what you and want and, you know, kind of just looking at these things and yeah, it's just, it, I, I, I can't stress enough how, how important it is just to, you know, just take some time and just figure out the stuff that you want mm -hmm. because, you know, for me, like it just seems to have a way of putting in and when things are happening around you like it's almost like when you put it down on paper it's almost like you send out something you know mm -hmm. whatever it is you know to the well, universe there's an, or yeah, whatever there's, just, there's an energy behind it exactly there's a, there's a, there's a charge yeah. around the idea yeah so it's almost mm -hmm. like you you you, you start to attract things like a magnet you know you attract the people that will support what you've written down mm -hmm. you'll attract Opportunities now, like what, was now. what was written down in there? Like, what did you what did you put? I know some some people would put it up on a vision board. Some people would write down, you know, this is how my t a typical day looks like now, five years from now. Yeah. Um, yeah. What What did you write? I know the date was really. Yeah. It's like really the, that was that was a part that made for an interesting story yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I had uh, there was I had plenty of things on there. I know that I had a lot of. There was some travel on there. There was a lot of things in around, you know, freedom and things like that. You know, not, not, you know, working in my my day job anymore. And um, at the time, I and mean, it's kind of amusing to look back at some of my 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 previous personal beliefs. Is like I had, I said that I wanted to have a portfolio of like 50 properties, and <laughs> things like that. You know, yeah. not everything on the Belize, uh, you know, happened, but um, which is good because. I, I probably don't want to manage all those properties right now, but mm -hmm. um, you know, just uh, a lot more uh, enjoying myself, enjoying time with my family, um, a lot of things in there with, with fitness and um, just things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, I mean, you want you wanted to have the fifty properties, and, and I'm part of that group that <laughs> had the beliefs of like, I want to have a hundred properties. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> I kind of you know kind of went down with that Kool Aid, so to speak, right? And and not, nothing against it, right? But I think it's if you really want it and it's part of something that's that's part of your truth, then yeah, go and invest in fifty properties, a hundred properties. But um, I think for a lot of people that you and both you and I know have kind of evolved beyond yeah. just that specific material wealth yeah. that in, in terms of being a driver for our life yeah so back so what, back, what happened i mean what uh yeah back what's when changed? i back when i set that i had no idea why i wanted that 50 properties it was just this round number and probably even many years ago it was probably 100 properties right mm -hmm. but every time that i kind of redid this thing that the numbers seemed to get smaller and smaller but when I set that, it was just an arbitrary number. It had nothing in around that. I just figured the more properties I had, the more money I would have, the more freedom I would have, and the more fun I would have. Mm -hmm. But what I was starting to realize was, and this isn't how it is for everybody, but this is from my personal experience, was you know, the more properties I had, the, the more it took me away from the things that I actually wanted. So mm -hmm. that was a big realization for me. So... You know, I, I and it's not to say that I, I may not come back to real estate at some point. I, I, I mean, actually, you still have, you still have investment properties. Yes, and yeah. you know that real estate has allowed to do us to do what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So you know, it has definitely helped big time. And you know, I, I may come back to it in some respect, but but it's almost uh, like it's almost like the just the shift the the way real estate is viewed now from your point from your perspective has changed. Yeah. Right before it was like this is the vehicle to get to. Right now it's just this is this is just part of what you're doing now. Yeah. Now rather than like this is the this is the goal, a hundred properties. Now it sounds like it's like it's more about your life. It's more about yeah time and and taking care of yourself and yeah exactly things like that. Which so, is which is the reason why it's interesting to watch yeah what you're doing because you've you've come from that. From that from that world, just like I mean, just like I did. That's how we met. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Investment property and rah rah rah. Let's wow. get. It brought us together. Huh? Let's get it's super rich. People. But you know what? I mean, I think the the relationships that that we've built, you know, like ours, which is really freaking cool, man. Yeah. Just because just because of real estate. Yeah. You know, but then just watching watching you evolve and change 
is really interesting. So, uh, if, if the, for those of you who who don't who don't know, um, the, the whole point of the, this whole real estate investing, the reason why I mean most people get into it is probably they've read a book or they've you know went to a workshop or whatever it is, and it is like one of the best asset classes. But it's one of those things where it's like it's it's bricks and mortar, you know, it's bricks and mortar, and it's and it's this one of, one of those things where it's people think it's passive, it's an it's a passive type of investment, you know. Tell like I, I know from my experience, but tell me about your experience, like in terms of it being passive, because you're like you've done rent to own just like I've done rent to own, yeah. and you've done student rentals. Like yeah. tell me tell me how passive it is, just so people have kind of a realistic. Yeah. idea because some of the people who are listening they're like i need more life balance i'm managing too many projects managing too many properties i'm trying to raise joint venture money i'm an entrepreneur trying to yeah. build my revenue i don't know like it depends yeah. they could be from any spectrum but i think the the analogy works to it, it, it works right so tell yeah. us your experience of how passive the investment is the yeah. business of real estate is on top of managing a family and having a job and you know yeah so you know, talking to what you said about the whole passive, uh, you know, investment, you know, that's that it's usually how it's sold. You know, I've gone to a bunch of, you know, part of a bunch of networking groups and yeah, buy, buy real estate and, you know, you just, your tenants will pay off your property and, you know, in 25 years you've got this house and you've got all this money and things like that. You know, th- there are ways to set it up where it can be more passive. But uh, early on, there was nothing passive about it. My, I've been in uh, many different uh, investment, uh, uh, different real estate investments. So I did the rent to own. Uh, the majority of my inv- our investments are student rentals, and we have some family rentals too, and some condos and stuff like that. But um, my first investment was a, a, a student rental investment, mm-hmm. and that was. Why'd you choose that? Like, why don't you think about like? <laughs> people partying and people trashing the place and yeah. I, I think that's the most management yeah. uh, headaches that you're going to get is, is yeah, it's, it's trying probably, to fill it every year right you get vacancies maybe every couple of years or whatever depending yeah. on, on what what uh, year they are in school Yeah, but it just yeah. seems like a lot more work and then there's bylaws coming in in different cities and cracking yeah. down and so yeah. why, the hell, why would you choose that? Yeah. <laughs> so student rentals uh, the, the main reason I, I got into it was because uh, some guys at work actually was in, were investing in student rentals. Um, they were investing in the city um, that I worked in, so I was at least familiar with it. It was kind of close to me, and you know I can just I can pick their brain. So they were still you know they've been in real estate you know a couple of years, so at least you know they had some experience. And I was just asking them questions and questions and questions. It felt like I went that route because I had that support. Then mm-hmm. I, I wasn't really into so the, most the, of what you knew, like right based on just people and conversations, yeah. and so you know, felt most comfortable. Yeah, like I, I didn't really go to a lot of real estate groups when I first started, um, so they were my support system. So I kind of picked their brain and kind of went that route. And you know the, the 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 main reason I went with student rentals was you know there, there was a lot of cash flow here. Mm-hmm. So that was my well. You live near university town, really. Too, exactly. Right? So, so it makes that much more convenient. Um, so, I actually started investing um, just before our family, uh, before we had our first child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And was there a reason? Was there like a motivation, or was it like, oh, these guys are work are doing it, so I'm going to do it too? Or uh, yeah, it was part of that. Um, You know, like a lot of us, we we read uh, Rich Rich. Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, and you know, let's get some good assets and let other people pay them down, and sounded good at the time. And I don't regret any of you know, I don't regret any of it because it got us to where we are right now. And of course, not, got yeah. a lot of, you know, great experience, met a lot of amazing people. Um, so, you know, maybe the timing in and around the family, because I knew that, you know, we were going to have a family, um, you know, ha- having real estate, you know, in like 25, 30 years, the house will be paid off. Um, it's a good savings, maybe for our kids, if they want to go to mm-hmm. university and you know, we can draw on the equity. And so, you know, maybe... The, the timing was in and around. I knew that we were going to have a kid in the next couple of years, and I figured, you know, we had mutual funds, but I wasn't overly confident with any of that stuff. So 
I thought I'd try something different that you know would uh, you know bring in a little bit more money down the road, and it's a lot safer of an investment. Mm-hmm. But yeah, back to your question about the passive. Um, like anything new, you know, you're going to put some time into it, and there's there's a a, a massive learning curve, especially with student rentals. Like you got to know your shit, or your house is going to get trashed, or you're not going to get paid, or you know those you know a lot of those stories you hear are true about the party houses. Mm-hmm. But you know, if, if you don't manage it properly, then your house will be that party house. Yeah. But if you do it properly, then there's there's less chance of that happening in your house and if it does happen then you know what to do i feel, I feel like the key thing is like <laughs> if you're gonna have a party house if you're gonna have people trash your place as a landlord as an investor you allow it you allow it you allow these people to move in you allow them to get through your screening process mm-hmm. you allow them to get away with this shit yeah you know so i mean there's so many things that are in our control and out of our control i mean and as a landlord, you got to take control of everything that's within your power, mm-hmm. so that you can avoid and, and yeah, the, the, the big thing that, risk, that's right? worked best for us with student rentals is offer something good, offer a really good house, be a really good landlord, and you attract good students. Mm-hmm. So that's been uh, paramount in our investing. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not to say we haven't had some challenges along the way with you know some jackass tenants. But for the most part, the numbers, like, it's worked out really, really well for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now, okay, so let's, go back to the, let's go back to the Belize because obviously real estate had a big, uh, had a big impact on your ability to do what you, what you were able to do, which was to, you took a leave of absence yeah. at the time of, what was it, like two, two or three years ago, right? You were able to, you were able yeah. to get to that point where you're going to take a leave of absence. But I want to know before that. I want to know, like, what went through your mind? Because there's so many people who are like, it's like, when is it the right time to leave my job and focus more on the business that I want to be doing? When is it the, when is it the right time to uh, transition from one job to a new job? Because it's like, it's, it's super safe. It's super comfortable. Every day is the same. It's, you know, like, it's, it's comfortable. You know, you know what yeah. to expect. You have the paycheck coming in every week. Yeah. And it's not easy for you. Like, you have, you have a family. You have a wife. You have kids. You have a mortgage. Now you have several properties. You have all these, <laughs> these properties. So if, if you decide that you, you're not going to go back to work after leave of absence, you have all these mortgages that you need to renew. How are you going to renew it if you don't have, like, regular employment? Yeah. So, like, tell me what, the, like, what went on in your head and, like, what had to happen or who yeah. did you, like, who are, who's a crazy nut that you talked to to get to the point where it's like, you know what, this is the year, like, I deserve to do this for myself. I need to take a break. Yeah. I need to put my life on pause, like, this this idea, you yeah. know, of, of, a, of a normal life on pause and explore another another way of being, another way of living, another way of raising my family. Like, how, like tell me about the journey before you got to that point. Because I know it yeah. wasn't easy. It wasn't no. like, oh, yeah, tomorrow I'm just going to do it. Like, it's super gradual yeah. from the outside world. If I was going to see you, like, a year, five years from now, and then now, it looks like, it's like, boom, you just made, like, this massive change. Yeah. But There's it's a lot so, it. so small. Like, it's gradual. It's incremental. Tell us, tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah, so... I was, uh, I had a lot, a lot of stuff on the go uh, back in the day. You know, it wasn't even just real estate. So, you know, we were expanding our investment portfolio. Um, we have uh, two young daughters, uh, which were obviously a lot younger back in the day. So they're four and seven now. Um, but I was, I was, I got this feeling that, you know, uh, in my job, I just wasn't, I just didn't get that fulfillment anymore. Like at the end of the day, uh, it just, I just didn't feel it in my gut. Mm -hmm. And over time, that feeling got worse and worse. Um, And I just, uh, I needed to just cut back on some stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had, I was part of network marketing. I was a travel agent. I was selling health gels i i was had you know a portfolio of like 12 properties you know more than half of them were student rentals so you know just a lot on the go plus <laughs> that made plus, me think of the picture you put up on facebook like the on the laptop cell phone in one hand looking at it another handset on the ear and then two babies running around and toys <laughs> everywhere like yeah that's yeah so you can imagine you know the chaos that that was causing in my life um you know, with, with the relationship 
with my kids, with my wife, with but dude, most friends. people don't. Most people don't get fulfillment from their job, um, like, or they may not admit that they don't get fulfillment from you their know? job. You yeah. know, like like how can we? Most people, most people out there might be like, like, what do you mean? Like, wow, like to get fulfillment from my job? My job is a job. It's a, you know, it's it's a paycheck. Like, why would I need to get fulfillment? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it just, that became much more important to me to, to get fulfillment from, um, you know, my job. Like I, I was spending at least probably eight, eight and a half hours of my awake time in a place where I'm just not getting juiced up. Like I'm not getting excited, you know, Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's Monday morning. Like I'm not looking forward to the week. Uh, you know, as it gets later in the week, you're like, oh yeah, the weekend's coming, you know, great. Right. And then it's just on repeat, and it. I'm like, you know, does, does life does life does life have to be this way, right? Mm-hmm. You know, is it does it need to be on repeat? Like it, it, it felt like Groundhog Day, you know. It's just <laughs> Every constant. Day. So you know, I, I work in the government, you know, the old safe, secure job, right? You know, the steady paycheck, the security, the the benefits, the pension, the vacation, all that stuff. You know, like what do they call it? The, the golden handcuffs, mm-hmm. right? That you know you're so yeah, keep golden you handcuffs. Yeah, I right? I, I up for no handcuffs, please. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that uh, I I looked around and a lot of the people in the government all kind of looked the same. You know, like they you Which know they, their, their like, head their head was down like a little slouch. low. Yeah, like, what, like, like they're like the what like they like a lot of them were like. Just the negativity, a lot of complaining. Like you hear, oh, I've got five more years to retirement and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Like I want to be excited every day and leading up to the mm-hmm. week. Like I don't care that today's Monday. Like, yeah, I'm, but you know, obviously, but, but you, you tolerated that or at least it didn't matter to you for years, right? Yeah. Up until yeah. a certain point. Like yeah. there's, there's years where you where that stuff like and fulfillment and all that didn't really matter like you I didn't mind coming in every day and doing a repeat I enjoyed work yeah so I what, enjoyed what changed there at the then? beginning like what, what? Um, so I, I got promoted so <laughs> more you know normal and... yeah let's let's work hard you get promoted you make more money you do more work that's you what have, everyone wants right right secure yeah. your job get promoted climb the ladder pay, climb, yeah yeah so, so you were getting what everyone all everyone yeah I was wants. doing what you're supposed to do or what was taught to us Mm -hmm. right so um and then i got to a point like i'm like i'm not i don't want to grow i'm like i'm not growing anymore here like growth is is very important to me and i felt like growth and what income growth and like uh, like person development uh, my skills like i'm in i have a computer background and you're supposed to replenish your knowledge in the industry because Mm -hmm. The technology changes so frequently, and I had no desire to learn any new stuff. So you know, I was kind well, of that's what, that's what government does, man. They like you, you get government involved, and everything freezes in time. It's a time machine. Yeah. So that was another so, another thing. Yeah, so like things things go slow, and I was getting more like it's slower moving. Yeah, yeah. And I I I didn't see the results like I see in some other areas that I was transitioning into. So at the Mm -hmm. time it was real estate. So like I enjoy, you know, buying a house that nobody likes. Like was it exciting? Like Yeah. Yeah. Like that juices me up. Like you can probably even see my facial expression right now and my tone kind of pick up when I talk about other things that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Versus when I'm talking talking about about, yeah, it was like groundhog day. Like you know you're all monotone. (laughs) And like then you when you're talking about things that you like, you got some emotion. But but real estate, yeah. So I was enjoying it a lot more. Like, I, like you know, you buy a house; it's a project. You, you you renovate it, and now you've created something that someone desires. Like, I felt value mm-hmm. versus when you know I, I'm at work. Like, I, I didn't as I you're got promoted. Taking, I just you're didn't just taking a paycheck. That's what it was. It was a paycheck versus you know the other aspects where mm-hmm. you know I got more fulfillment of, and then that started to to transition me into other things like right mm-hmm. so so i had uh, so real estate allowed for a couple parental leaves it allowed for you know a, a couple unpaid leave of absences it allowed for my my wife to quit her job and now explore some new things on her end so i i don't regret our real estate purchases at all uh, i'm just glad that i woke up that you know i i don't want the 50 properties right now and i mm-hmm. and i 
And as I said, like that's just how I where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. I may come back to that stuff, and but this is just where I'm at. It's it's allowed us to have some some freedom and some more balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have the perfect life then. Oh, so, no. sounds like life is perfect. It's all rosy and nah. sunny and no, no, no. Because <laughs> you're because you're nice. a, you're a coach, right? So everything yeah. everything must be and that's just the perception great. people think, right? Um, but no, no, it's 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 far from perfect. And you know, I I stress with you know my coaching clients, you know, the whole life balance thing, right? So just because. Uh, I help others with their life balance. It doesn't mean that mine is perfect. Like it, it's far from perfect, and um, it, it, I don't believe it'll ever be perfect. It's just ups and downs and different areas of your life, and mm -hmm. it's it's just the the important thing is just being aware of where you're at with you know your your life balance, mm -hmm. so you can now shine a spotlight to whatever area of your life needs it your attention most. So, what was it that made you want to become uh, to become a coach? Like so, what woke you up to the idea of was it after the leave of absence or was it uh, in between then? Like what ins what inspired you or yeah. you know what situations yeah. occurred in your life to make you be like wow you know what I think I want to help people with their life choices life balances or lifestyle yeah. design their, yeah you know you know uh, I think it was just just through experience like I I get a good feeling. You know, helping, and inspiring people, and making positive changes in in, in their lives. Uh, I've like I've had a, a pretty pretty journey getting to where I am, and you know, uh, I feel that you know some of the experiences that I've learned, you know, I, I can put that out there to other people and help them do the same thing. So you know, I've I've done a lot of work on myself. I've done a lot of personal development. I've gone on lots of retreats and all of these things. So these people are, are are taking their message and sharing it with me and it's almost as if I just have a feeling that y it, it's good to reciprocate you know mm -hmm. what they taught me I implemented that stuff into my life and in doing so it's made me feel real freaking good mm -hmm. and I feel real good to share that with others knowing that they'll do the same and it just Hopefully it trickles outward. Right. Hopefully, yeah. you know, they pay it forward. And yeah. The positivity, just, right. and, you know, just breeds more positivity, right. right? And you help, you know, like I've helped parents and kids and all these things. And so what did the growth, like, I mean, you're, you're talking about personal growth. What uh, what did that lead to? What, what did the growth and what did the awareness bring up for you? Like, was there anything in your life that you're just like, oh, my gosh, I need to, like... I need to work on that, or there's something here that's missing, or something I need to change, or um, just something that you haven't looked at before. So, what was it like? Because I know, I know, in my personal experience, there's certain certain realizations, certain epiphanies that occurred, and I had, and I just had to make decisions mm -hmm. to be in alignment and be in integrity with that with that new awareness, yeah. which has led me to you know to yeah. the feeling space that I'm in right now. Yeah. So, what were those? What were those for you? Like what? Yeah. Because obviously, real estate was one, real estate was one of those epiphanies where it's like, oh, I should, I should probably, you know, put put some thought into investing in real estate so that I have something in the future, like some some assets. That's that's obviously that, that one realization about, yeah. but money. But like, what about personally, like life wise, like? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was, I, I was really busy, and like I missed out on some things, you know, just early on, and you know, even. The couple first years of you know my daughter's life, you know, I just I just both. wasn't around. Oh, no, not both. Just I I, I woke up. Your eldest. Yeah, uh, I woke up pretty quick to the fact that I want I want to be around more. Like I I want to I want to be present more. Um, so as I said, like I had so much stuff on the go. Like I, I was just keeping myself busy, thinking that that was that was the the definition of success. You know. Oh, the phone has to be ringing, or emails have to be flooding in, so that you know, hey, look, I'm successful. I'm I'm so busy. I'm closing deals, type of thing. But <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, I I flipped that to who, right? Like I'm looking so busy for like for who? I know, right? Who cares how mm -hmm. you look to other people, mm -hmm. right? You know, it should be you know, is that your definition? Of so you success? felt like you were missing out on on your child's life. I like, I like missed out bit. on like like life. Like that's. I'm doing all these things to create that stuff. So, yet, 
that stuff is taking me away from the, the things that I really, really want. Mm. So, you know, the, the big stuff for me was just starting to cut the shit. Cut, cut the stuff. Cut some of these things that I have in the go just to create some space so I can start to take some stuff in. Mm-hmm. So one of the big realizations for me was I used to think that I was happy and I used to think that I was confident. <laughs> I used to think like wholeheartedly, like, you know, a couple of years ago, like no doubt, like I'm smiling, I'm Mr. Positive, optimistic, all that stuff, right? And I used to think, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty confident dude, right? So I, I, I had a simple... It wasn't obviously simple at the time because I didn't know it. But looking back on it now, it was a pretty simple realization that I'm at this job eight and a half hours a day. So the majority of my awake time and I'm not happy there and I'm not confident there because I talked earlier about, you know, the technologies and all these things. And if you're you're not not keeping keeping up to speed and you kind of fall behind and, you know, you're in these meetings and you know how you're talking about and <laughs> yeah it's just how it is right so that was a big one for me a really really big one because I, I just I just thought that that's how it was like I just thought that you know I was happy but the majority of my awake time in that week I'm in something where I'm not happy and I'm not confident so what do you think that does to me when when I come home with my family you know not not I'm not conscious that, oh, I'm not happy, all this stuff, but that stuff's in here. Like, that doesn't just shut off when I walk out of my job, mm-hmm. right? Like, Did you know some... that you were not happy? Uh, did not, you, did not you even know what that point. meant? Did you even know like what that felt like? like or, I or was it just like a feeling and you kind of just like left undefined? Because I know, I mean, for a lot of people, like, uh, emotions are not as, like, we're not aware of our emotions or we're not... We don't have the name for our emotions. Uh-huh. We go through life and and you don't realize, oh wow, I'm actually depressed. I'm actually yeah. not happy about this. Yeah. And and you, you, know? you touch on a good point because um, yeah, back then I didn't. I I was like that, and I still am to some point. Like I I'm still kind of getting in touch with the emotions. I'm starting to feel shit in my belly now, where I never felt that before. Like I used to, like you know, like you feel the pit in your stomach. Mm-hmm. Like you, I may have felt it before, but I never really tuned into it it used to be just eh, whatever but now like i'm starting to kind of question that like what's that feeling like why do i feel that way but yeah so i'm i'm just i'm just starting to feel the emotions a little bit more like back in the day like i I never cried at all like i I don't know Mm -hmm. what it was like i don't know if there was things that just didn't lead me to cry and men don't cry yeah and it's not like toughen up boy (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's not like i'm bawling every night or anything but Stop crying like a girl. Yeah, I know you've heard that's them all, what right? we that's what we learned what we growing up, up to, right? right? That's what they condition us yeah. to to be yeah. like. But there'll be like these inspirational videos or just a really touching story that mm-hmm. I read and I, I I get teary eyed and like I just I feel it in my body these stories or you know even like music. Back in the day, it was just 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 noise. That's what it was to me. Just noise. <laughs> now, how dare you call music noise? It was to me back then. Ugh. Nowadays, like I still hear, I still <laughs> listen to some of the music, but I listen to the lyrics now, and I listen to the instruments more, right? Like I, you would never catch me, you know, listening to like, you know, like some classical or some instrumental music, but even songs that have no lyrics now, like some of them, like I just feel, like I just, mm. I just feel it through my body mm-hmm. I've never had that before so oh, it's interesting. I think that's that's the really cool part and that's the stuff that I'm getting really interested into uh, recently more recently is is the fact that our body tells us so much mm-hmm. and it, it, it helps us understand our intuition it helps us understand our emotion I mean some people feel anxiety or fear when really it's it's excitement Mm-hmm. Like they're elated, yeah. You know, it's like it's like oh my gosh, this is like they don't understand this feeling, and they kind of they they run or they run towards right, they run away or they run towards it based on what they think the feeling is. But if we don't know what that is, mm-hmm. if we haven't uh, built up the awareness or grounded ourselves into our body or explored the different emotions in our body, how are we going to react? How are we how are we going to act upon those emotions? Yeah. It's no, it's really cool that you talk about how music does. 
yeah. uh, does wonders connecting ourselves into our body. It's yeah. like, it's one of those things. It, for me, music, like a song goes on and I could be nodding my head. Depending on, depending on how good the song is, I could be just tapping my foot. Or I could just be rocking my head, yeah. or I could be like just like pounding on the steering wheel because I'm so pumped up. Like, yeah. and like it's involuntary sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and some people they're not connected. Yeah, through their body like that. It's like you know in the English. You know, like no offense to to the English to the people in the UK, but they <laughs> they live up here. You know, they live up so much in their head, and yeah. they're so disconnected from from their body. You yeah. know, the intuition, the feeling. There's just it's just pure logic. Yeah, but it sounds like you like that's something that you've been more and more getting into, dude. Getting more into your body, and and obviously, I mean, it shows. You you did a race just the other day. You're yeah. you're working out more regularly. You're doing yeah hot yoga. You're doing all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was that part of it? You, like, because that, that's kind of what I'm thinking about is for personal transformation. Um, there's one really powerful saying that I learned that it's conquer the body and the mind will follow. Mm-hmm. Conquer the body and the mind will follow because our, our brain has all these little barriers and mechanisms that hold us back from growth. Yeah. But if we can conquer the body, mean not like master it or, or like perfect it, but understand just it. understand it or get more mobile or lose a little bit of weight, just be in better shape. We're almost better equipped. Yeah. With a healthier and stronger body, better equipped to deal with the internal stuff. Yeah. To deal with, you know, past trauma, to deal with, um, you know, what, like our hurt, our, our, what makes us, what, what we're unhappy about in our lives and th- things like that. We actually f- can face it yeah. when we've transformed our bodies a little bit more. Yeah. Is that, do you think that's part of what has led you to this point? Was there, was there at any point where like you started taking care of your, your body and then that kind of led to it? Yeah, led to growth because you became stronger. Like, yeah, uh, how did it happen? I, I can say that the growth has um, accelerated because of uh, me looking after myself more. Um, you know, there, uh, I, I've made a, a massive shift in um, you know uh, the, my my physical body. You know, from what I'm eating. You know, I've made a shift in my diet. Like I used to. Uh, I eat a lot more meats, red meats, chicken, fish, and uh, you know, if, if you're into that, good for you. It's not that I don't eat that anymore. I just don't eat as much of it anymore. Uh, pretty much cut off dairy uh, entirely. Um, so that's you know, it's on no the cheese. Diet. I, I can't said, live I, without my cheese. I said man. pretty much. I can't live without my red meat. What do you mean? Right. But I don't want to eat like a rabbit. Yeah. So <laughs> for me. Um, what, from my experience is just the more I started making shifts, the better I felt. I had more energy. Uh, I started seeing results. I was getting comments from people. I'm not gonna lie, like it, it feels good. Hey, you know, you're it looks like you're taking care of yourself. Yeah, you know, it's just just how it was. So, and it was just a snowball effect for me. You know, I just oh, you know, this is giving me more energy. So I'll just do more of it. So if I mm-hmm. do more of it, then yeah. I'll get more of that. And that was just the association I made. So. Um, that that has been huge for me. Now you know an exercise. Yeah, I just two days ago I just finished running around the bay in Hamilton. So it was thirty k, thirty kilometers, thirty kilometers. Yeah. So I, I've I've That's I just nuts, dude. Like I, I'm over the last couple of years I've been setting fitness goals. So you know I'll, like I'll register for a race. So by registering for a race gets my ass in gear to do something. So this around the bay race was. A couple of days ago, so I had to train through this shitty winter that we this had. This is the worst winter to train in. Yeah. So if I if I didn't set that goal and if I didn't register and pay you know a hundred bucks whatever, I probably wouldn't have ran outside it even half those times. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just gets my my ass in gear and kind of keeps me me fit throughout. So um, and you know there there's some science like I read some 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 books like there's one called Spark. Where there, yeah, it, you it, recommended that to yeah, me. I can't it, wait it to does, read that. It, it, there's research that shows, you know, you do these exercises and there's links between, there's links to your brain. And, you know, it releases chemicals and, you know, it, it, it makes you happier. And, oh man, there's so much so much good stuff. You mean for that. me to grow and change my life and transform, I have to start taking care of my body? You mean I got to change what I eat? Like I got to go go for a walk now? 
Like, I can't have my Big Mac every day? What the hell, man? Yeah, you can, but... You're, you're asking too much to... of me. <laughs> and you just you just don't do it all at once, obviously. I know. <laughs> you know, there's no way you could do it all at once because yeah. you, you would revert back in no time. So, I think that's the overwhelming aspect of, yeah. of change is that we want to do so many things at once. And we, and we look at somebody like... We look at somebody like you and it's like, ah, oh, so I... I like, I want to model my life after this person or in a way. Right. And it's like, okay, so what is this person eating? What's this person doing? What, like what kind of language does it, does he have? Like what's he, what's he's constantly speaking about? What's he putting into his brain? Yeah. And it's, and it's quite overwhelming, right? Yeah. yeah. People don't realize that it takes just a little bit. Maybe yeah. you st- maybe like for me, it was just stop eating fast food. Yeah. You know, if I was going to go eat out, eat somewhere where it's like close to, you know, home cooked or whatever it is. Yeah. Like the place, like the place that we went. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and then, and then slowly it was just like, okay, stop drinking pop. Yeah. You know, soda, stop drinking yeah. that. Yeah. And drink more water. And like, it was just slowly, gradually. And then you just start seeing yeah. uh, results in the your, the way your clothes fit. And yeah. The conversation around is like, hey, well, something, something's going on. Like, you look, you look really good. You look different. Your, your skin color is, has changed. Yeah. But when you look back five years, like, if you, if you see a back to back picture, it looks like you kind of just turned a, a light switch on and yeah. off. Yeah. You know, it's like this, yeah. this immediate thing. But and there's some, it, it's, it's difficult because of the marketing out there and and there's a lot of contradictions with things you know is wheat good for you gluten good for you dairy it's you know good for calcium and meat you get your proteins and like you just hear conflicting things from different people and usually like that that freezes people into doing nothing Mm -hmm. so you know this person says this and this person says that um what worked best for me is just experiment with what works for you just Mm. just try something you know just just do it and then if it makes you feel good keep doing it that hmm, that's that's the simplified way just and just do more of it and then experiment with the next thing and you know if it makes you feel better do more of it and then just repeat yeah so you know there's no like totally right thing for everybody you know everybody's different so just just figure out something that works for you and do more of it i think the problem is when we stop questioning and tr- stop trying things i mean you like if if you were in your job and you didn't question things and you're not willing to be like, okay, well, wait, this doesn't feel good anymore. Let's go find something that does feel good and then go with that and then follow that. Okay, this this feels really good. This is this is pretty awesome. Let's keep doing more of that. Then all of a sudden, oh, then you know, this is yeah, it doesn't really fulfill me anymore. Maybe I'll try something else. Yeah, you know, uh, out, from, from the outside world, that might just be like, what do you mean? Like, why is this person jumping around from that's how you one, find one thing into another, from one diet to another, from one strategy to another, yeah. to one workout routine or, or or whatever it is? But I mean, if people didn't question and didn't try. They wouldn't grow. They wouldn't, right. and, and they wouldn't know it feels good. And they'll just be listening to other people. Right. That's how you get closer to what drives you. That's how. That's what gets you closer to your passion. Like your life is. It's an experiment. Like you don't. I don't. Know, you just don't wake up and know what you want to do. You know, like kids nowadays. Like they they finish high school at sixteen and they're expected to know what they want to do the rest of their life. Then they they just arbitrarily pick something in university and oh. I spent four years here and all this money looks like I'm going to be an accountant. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, maybe you try it and now you don't like it. Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're not a failure. You've just tried something and you've crossed that off your list. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you've learned some things along the way of what you, what you like to do and what you don't like to do. And you hop into the next thing. But you're right. You know, society, you know, our programming... Like they, they think they, they push you along and oh look at what are you doing? Like, like you failed. The, like it's like the, the first girl you date, you gotta marry her. What do you mean you're gonna get yeah. another girlfriend? <laughs> right? That's right? Good. The, your first job, you gotta retire there. You yeah. gotta you gotta move up that, that ladder and, and you're and you're gonna retire. What do you what do you mean you're gonna switch careers and yeah. go back to school? Yeah. Like this is absurd. I think people have they have this they're really just so sheltered. They're just so like in this in this space where it's just like, you know, nothing can go wrong as long as I, I well I got this degree and this is what I'm trained in so this is what I'm going to stick with yeah you know and yeah. like it's it's kind of decided for them or they pre-decided and they're just not gonna they're not willing to change yeah and you, you know, know and like I think the, that's the like a big thing for me was it's tragedy uh, it's a tragedy yeah you know it's it's the questioning like uh, the, the questioning over the years um, has led to the most growth and when I started to take some extra time with some of the good questions 
that's when life started to change a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, so you weren't even looking for the answers. It was like the finding the good questions. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in, in the past, in, like what, like what? You know, like, like, uh, am I am I happy? You know, like, what what makes me happy? You know, what what do I like to do? I think people are. I think people are afraid of that answer. Yeah. Because if they ask that, because then it leads to so, yeah, effort because and change. What that answer and, means, what that what that answer means is that it's it, like it means. Well, so now what am I going to do about that? Because you have to. Like you, you can't leave that. Because it's like, well, am I happy? It's like actually. No, I'm not happy. Then that's going to lead to another question, another question, or or it's like, well, if I'm unhappy, then what's making me unhappy? Why do I feel that way? And if I feel that way, what can I do to change it, to resolve it? And that could mean things that have to do with the relationship, mm -hmm. with where you, with where you live, with the job that you're at. These are serious things, man. Some people don't want to ask themselves, "Are you happy?" Yeah, you know, like, uh, "Am I happy?" And yeah. or look and look at themselves in the mirror and, and yeah. say it. So and that's what will happen. One question will definitely lead to many more questions. As long as, you know, the next question is, you know, uh, a progression on top of the previous question, right? And it just, like, that's that's where you grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I really just encourage people to, you know, just find a space to be able to sit with some of these questions. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I, I remember back in the day when I was busy, 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 people were starting to ask these questions of me. You know, I, I go to some, you know, you know, events and retreats and... There's these questions. I'm like, what the hell is he asking me this question for? <laughs> like, I'm here for business training. Or, and then they fire in this, these questions. Like, even this life balance exercise that I talk about so often. Like, this was introduced to me from a business coach of mine back in the day. Like, I went to her to help me with business plans and marketing and all this stuff. And she throws this exercise in there. At the time, I'm like, okay, you know, let's put this off to the side. Let's get back to the business plan. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm paying all this money for. And I tell you, it was probably like three years later, I was doing some cleaning in my basement on a bookshelf and conveniently that exercise was there and probably the timing that I found it was the exact time that, that I needed, needed it, it. Yeah. right? And I'm like, huh, Fuck. that's interesting. <laughs> Look at that. And then I did, did it again. I'm like, huh, I'm just wondering where I'm at at the time, right? I'm like, huh, that's actually kind of a cool exercise I should mm -hmm. probably do this more often so um, but it wasn't until like I started to kind of to sit with these questions a little longer and you know just put myself in an environment where mm -hmm. I, I can answer them you know yeah that made me feel comfortable so for people who have who haven't seen the the life balance exercise is, is the, you're talking about the wheel right yeah yeah so it's like every spoke in the wheel represents an area or aspect of someone's life yeah and you kind of rate it from zero 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 to ten yeah, yeah one yeah, to ten yeah yeah one yeah. to ten yeah and uh i mean the whole idea is for for life for life to be balanced per se you know it kind of has to have that round, roundness, that yeah. roundness to it. Yeah. And I know when I did it a couple of years ago, it was like, it was just, that wheel would not roll down, <laughs> downhill. Yeah. You know, it won't even. Yeah. What I like about that exercise is it's so simple. Like I used to complicate things back in the day. And, and one of my coaches, you know, he's, he's a master for just uh, keeping things simple. Um, so that this exercise is, is, is simple like there's 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 eight spokes and they're just different areas of your life from like finances to your health to you know your your work and your relationships mm -hmm. and personal development and rest and relaxation and things like that and you know you just basically rate it and then you just kind of color it in and the more round it is the from my experience the more flow i have Mm -hmm. And when I say more does round, the, does the feeling that you have like usually correspond to how your wheel looks? Yeah, yeah. Things like it just the, seems like flow is like the perfect word. Like it just seems like flow. Things are are, are moving along nicely. Yeah, you've got rolling. some momentum. You know, there, there's there's difficulties in there. There's some ups and downs. But you know, I'm not saying that like I'm all nines like across the board in all of those. Like you know, even if you're like. All fours across the board. You know, you, you want to you want to aim for for getting it round, and then work out from Fullness. there, yeah. right? Because you just and here's the simplicity. You just you look at the wheel, and you look at how round it is, and then imagine that wheel trying to roll, 
So you may have a couple of areas of your life that are, are sevens. You may have a bunch of sevens in a row. So you start rolling along and then, you know, your relationships, you hit, it's like a two. So I think of that as like a pothole. So you're rolling along, rolling along, you got some really good momentum and you're moving and things are, things are flowing. Mm-hmm. Then you, you, you drop into this pothole and you, you lose your momentum because you, your speed slows down, yeah. right? And then you know, your next couple are like threes and fours and you start to speed up again and then you just, you're on repeat. So if, if you don't work towards correcting those, you know, the, those abnormal numbers, like you may have about you know some eights and nines, and from my experience when I was working, like my fa- my finances are are high because I'm making money, but over time, some of the other areas of my life are being affected. They're going lower, yeah. Right. So if I didn't have this awareness to come back to this exercise and shift that spotlight from money making activities to relationships, then you know stuff. It's just going to go downhill, and you're not going to have any flow. You're not going to have any momentum, and it's just, from my experience, like you, I'm just less happy. Mm-hmm. The more out of balance my life is, so yeah, that that is one exercise that has has made a major transformation in my life in like the last probably six or seven years, mm-hmm. and that was that's one of the most crucial tools. Right, like, it was just like ah oh, yeah, I want business training. What is this exactly life it. balance garbage? And it was so cool it's, to kind of look back so on that. Is there um because this is this is the the challenge that I post to people is the fact that there is no life and work separation. Like there is no one and the other. Yeah, there's not a separate wheel for both. Yeah, like you <laughs> when you, you go to work, you come home, you're bringing work home. Even if it's not physically there, it's in your head, you're thinking about it. Yeah. Or if you have trouble at home, then you're, you're bringing it to work. Yeah. Like that stuff is one and the same. And I think that if we can realize that we are just this one person. Mm-hmm. It's know, all part of it. And that wheel shows it, yeah. you that this is your life right in front of you. Here's the diagram of what is going on in your life right now mm-hmm. so yeah no there's there's no separation like like work is part of your life yeah and so is your health and so is your money like it all ties in it's all a piece of the pie right mm-hmm. so yeah and you talk about you know like you bring that work home like my wife was in a job that she didn't enjoy either like we, then, we had these com- conversations comes. like yeah like it, it it drains the energy some of these conversations especially like if you're coming home talking about shit that went on at work that you weren't a big fan of well what do you think like you're transferring that energy to your partner you're transferring that to your kids and that's mm. poisonous it brings it so brings it all down so over time like that's going to affect many many things so you know if you're not questioning am i happy then you'll overlook the impact of these things that are having in your life and how you impact you others right you know and you won't make that change like yeah change like, i'll tell you change is not easy you know especially when you're used to going to a job like i, I mean i haven't been at my job for a super long time so it's, it's been like 14 years like, oh, that's the, okay. I know but uh, these standards, like like these days, people are in their careers for what three, four, five, maybe eight years. So I'm talking from the government. Right? Yeah, government. So yeah, normal true, government true. is yeah, you get in there. Your at 14 years is like nothing. Yeah, you get in there right? and like you know they look at life. You, you're a lifer. That's exactly it's like a like, sentence. What does it mean? I know. That's how they <laughs> why why do they relate it to a... So exciting, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's... so th- this is what you do with your clients. Like, is this? Um, I mean, so. When it when it comes to working with clients, well, first of all, who what kind of person wants to will want to work with you? Like, who is the who is the ideal person, and uh, in, in terms of I guess a client or a customer, yeah, to to come to you? Like, what do they look like? What does their life look like? What's what's going on in their lives? Yeah. Um, well, an ideal client for me is is someone who has. Um, been in a similar situation as I had been. So that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to get into this work because, you know, uh, I have a journey, I have a path that I've been on and I could relate with some of the people who have helped me. So some of the people that I work with can obviously relate to kind of what I've been through. So, you know, a lot of the clients that I've worked with are uh, busy, overworked, uh, unfulfilled in their job. Um, their health and their relationships are, are being affected. They're they're out of balance, and they're they're just there. There are people that 
are at a point where they, they know that they want something more. Like mm-hmm. they, they've, they've got to that question, well, you know, am I happy? Right. And then we start to dig a little deeper into, you know, or, you know, what makes you happy and, you know, where can we, you know, start to, um, you know, focus your time on various things of your life and things like that. So, yeah, just uh, just people that are looking to get more out of their life. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I, there's this one question and it stunned me when I was first asked this question years ago. Um, like, like, what do you do for fun? And like it, fun, it, it's done in me. my life. <laughs> There's no thing. <laughs> what no, do you mean fun? Nobody got time for that. Yeah, right? I don't have time for that. I'm too busy working and right. investing. And exactly. So and that was a question that like it was weird. And I like I reflected on that. I'm like, why don't I have an answer for that? And like we talk about realization, like that that was a big one. But that's just so like it's just a question, yeah. right? Like, why, but, but it's why also like it, why do I not put value on f- having fun? That's I know. It's like, well, how come I haven't valued that? How come I haven't thought yeah. that was important? Like looking back to on make that time to have fun. Looking back on that now, I'm like, like that's part of of life for me. Like mm-hmm. I that's want what's important to, to you. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I, I, I think most, for most people. <laughs> I hope. I hope so. Yeah. Having fun is yeah a value for most people. Yeah. So you know that that's a good question. And for the listeners, just just if 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 you. Uh, a delay on that question you should you should kind of sit with that like why why don't why don't you know what you want to do for fun like if fun is important to you and you don't really have an idea what you like to do for fun anymore like like when we bring that question up like you know people they, they they're, they're delayed for a bit on that but eventually you know you put them in an environment where you know they can have some time because normally when you ask that question people are so busy and they've got so much shit going on in their head they, they they're not they can't really focus on it, mm-hmm. right? But when you put people into an environment and you actually give them some time and some space to kind of sit with it, like there's the there's the delay of like a couple minutes, like you ask a question and people are going to just sit in there. But then, you know, you got some good music playing in the background. You might be sitting in nature with the trees and the water or whatever it is. It just, it triggers something in you. And it did for me anyway. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then like they just start rhyming off this list. And then when they start talking about it, like they just light up and they have all this energy and they're like, oh yeah, I used to play music back in high school or I used to play soccer. I was on such and such a team and we were so great. And then they just start rhyming off all this awesome, fun stuff that they like to do. But before that, it was just, you know, a blank page for five minutes. They're just staring at it. Mm -hmm. All they really needed was to have the question asked in the right space, in the right environment and have some time to process it. And that was the big thing. Like, we're so busy, we don't have the time to answer these questions that will make your life more enjoyable and more fulfilling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It was probably a long-winded answer to that question. No, I mean, that's exactly what... <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what I was trying to find out. Yeah. You know, because people might be listening and, and, and kind of thinking about it. It's like, well, you know, when I talk to people and they ask me, it's like, it's like, wait, so what do you do for work? And I tell them that I'm a coach. They're like, oh, so well, like, what sport? And I'm like, no, actually, it's the sport of life. <laughs> They're just like, that's a job? <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, I'm like it is. You know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of people actually need it. And, and people won't even, they don't even realize how much, uh, you know, how beneficial it can be. Yeah. Um, I think we reach, uh, we, sh- we reach a limit when it comes to, ourselves right because we're, we're in our head we're in our life yeah it's hard to step outside of it and kind of look at it with a fresh perspective but if you are working with a coach or you're doing uh like a, a, a retreat like the one we're going to talk about yours the game changer you're actually in an environment where the intention is transformation is change or just even just a small shift even just a little bit more yeah Awareness, you yeah. know, some people have never given them given themselves the chance to do it. Yeah, you know, sometimes, um, like when I teach when I teach yoga class, at the end we have people lie down in shavasana, which is like you're just lying down, which is I called shavasana. It's corpse pose, and the way I think of it is like this is such a luxury, man. Like how many, how often do you get the chance to just lie down? I know. Breathe. Yeah. Not do anything. No one's going to call you. 
No one's going to bother you. Cell phones are off. Everything's put away. Yeah. There's nowhere to go. I'm going to I'm still going to get you out of here on time, but like it's a luxury to do that. No distractions, you're in a quiet room. Mm-hmm. People are afraid of the quiet. I mm. was I mean, you know, there are times I, I still have, have to keep the radio on, keep the music on, yeah. keep the TV on. They, they get these magazines, distractions. reading. Yeah, they have their phones, they have their little beeps going, and I was super guilty of it. And, you know, I still I still am guilty of it, but not to the extent I was in the past. Like, there, there's something about quiet that people are afraid of. They're mm-hmm. afraid to, they're afraid of their, their what's going on up top. They're afraid of those thoughts and... You know, processing some of those questions. What what is that going to drum up for them? Mm-hmm. You know, is that going to have to lead them to to have some deeper conversations with people? Is that going to lead them to have to make some major changes in their life? Is think, it worth it? I think the scary aspect is that most people are getting away with not having to step up in their <laughs> life or grow. Yeah, most people are like they're getting away with it, and yeah. they have no problem with it. Yeah. They don't know what they're missing out on. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're missing out on. So tell us. So tell us about uh, about the game changer weekend. Yeah. You know why you chose the the title first of all, the game changer. Yeah. And what happens in that environment? Because I've been there. Like so. So I'll explain like my my experience. I went to the to one of the first ones. Yeah. So I'll share my experience about it. But I want to hear from your perspective, like how that come about. How long was it in the making? What was the thought process behind it? What's the intention with it? You know, what what do you want people to walk away with? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this was uh, uh, probably in the making for a while. You know, I've always had uh, ideas on, you know, putting something together, getting getting a group of people together, and you know, like just helping people live better. So yeah, it's been in the making for a couple of years. I, I did my uh, I did my first one last summer, and it was it was it felt really good. You know, there was just I, I take what I've learned from you know going to some other retreats and what's worked best for me, and uh, I found that you know creating the the space was super important. Like if you really want to get some results, like you really got to create that environment mm-hmm. uh, and have. Uh, there's some time to sit with some of these questions. So, yeah, this uh, this one is a pretty stunning location in Oakville. Uh, when I got there, I was just, I was in awe. I was speechless. It was right along the water, um, right in the, some, uh, a garden. Yeah, it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, this location is going to be it's gonna be beautiful yeah. like when it starts. Yeah, it's yeah. Really good. So, yeah, just... Uh, it's it's about transformation it's about you know figuring out where you are in your life you know just uh you know just kind of a reality check just uh, disconnecting from the world so to speak you know you just similar to what you talked about you know shavasana like you know it's you you got some quiet right you, you've eliminated distractions it's you're, a luxury you're, man exactly to just have that moment for who are yourself, we to think that that's that we deserve it right right exactly and that's that's how i was like it was it was tough to kind of get away for a bit but you know even just powering down for two days log out log off check out you know get your stuff in order before you leave and show up and be present and be connected with the group. That's when you'll get the most out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. The, um, you know, there, there's a part in there where I share about, um, you know, just, just energy. Like, I think there's this is underrated a lot with um, things. Like, you don't really hear too much about, you know, just energizing yourself. So, I was really excited to include that in the Game Changer Weekend with, you know, just... How do you bring more energy to you? Like, how do you add more hours to your day, right? Mm-hmm. And just it, you know, just from like just your habits, your eating, your, you know, just exercising, even like throughout the day. Like, I just share some things that have worked with me. Like, just simple things, like just stretching, or getting outside and just kind of walking through nature and just mm-hmm. hearing the birds, and just like just tape, taking deep inhales and just inviting life into your body and, and eating right and things like that so 
So yeah, so we transitioned from uh, the, the start of kind of um, discovery, where you at right now? You know, you do you do a you know, whole life balance exercise and just see where you're at. Yeah, right. And you know, we transitioned from that throughout the weekend to figuring out what juices you up. You know, what what gets you excited, right? So like even earlier when I was talking about you know like work and just some things that you know are just blah, you know just things like that to, you know, talking about real estate, talking about life coaching, like you just, you just see the expression on people's faces. Like you just, you just feel their energy. And that's what we work towards throughout the weekend. We, we help mm-hmm. identify, you know, um, what do you want out of life? Like what, what is truly living for you? Right. You know, you may not be happy in where you currently are and you start to figure out, well, what, what can we do to, help bring you more towards happiness how do you invite more happiness into your life every day Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean for for me from my experience when i when i attended was the fact that by people simply just showing up they're saying something yeah you know they're really saying like i need this i need to carve out a whole weekend to give this to myself and for people to have already made that decision they're already like on their way Mm-hmm. You know, whether the ch- whether the shift or the epiphany happens that weekend or like weeks or months down the road, mm-hmm. it's I mean, some people need to be in that space because they've never given that to themselves. Right. Yeah. And I think I think what's important right now is the fact that we see coaches, we see uh, all these different gurus, if you want to call them gurus. And they are miles ahead, you know, they're miles ahead, they're in orbit, right? And they're so abstract, they're so, um, they see things in a completely different way. So when you're trying to take information from them, or you're trying to learn from them, they're kind of off the ground, They're, they're, they're gone, you know, they're so way beyond the point where most people are at, which is like, Wait, I'm just starting to question if I'm happy or not. I'm just starting to realize that I'm not fulfilled in my life and my work. Yeah. I'm just realizing that I'm not reaching my full potential. Yeah. You know, don't tell me about like this la di da, you know, fluff. You know, <laughs> that uh, that that you're you're telling me about because I think what's really cool about attending yours is that like, is is you're you're pretty much right along beside them. You're like shoulder to shoulder with us. You know, yeah. you're like, hey man. I'm in this journey too. Yeah. You know, it's not that I'm steps ahead or steps <clears throat> behind or or I'm above or you're below whatever. It's like, hey man, this is th- my life now is like this because of these realizations, because of these tools, because of these insights. And this is just from my experience and I'm making this event because I think that you're going to get a lot of value from it. And yeah. that's what's that's what's really cool about it is because like People can just look at you and they're not seeing somebody who's way beyond ahead of them. And, you know, yeah. maybe this conversation will change 10 years from now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, about about that. But like, no, but I mean, as of, as of right now, it's, yeah, it's good. Observation. It's, it's relatable. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? It's relatable. This is like you're going through your challenges right now. Yeah. You can relate to people's stuff. You, you, you have, you know, property, you have your jo- job, like you have, you've, you have quit, quit stuff, you have decluttered, you've taken care of yourself, changed, tr- transformed your body, di- done different things like this. And people can relate to it because you're not, uh, you're not so far off yeah. the grid where you're just like, oh yeah, just, you know, just be yeah. positive and, yeah. you know, yeah. like that's not enough. Right. Like being positive is not enough. Having a vision is almost not enough. There's got to be there's some there's some real hard work, you know. And sometimes it's tough. It's like, well, do you should you have these people in your life? Should you be at that job? Like that's the hard stuff. That's like the stuff where you're just like, I, I need to leave the room, like because you feel you feel sick because yeah. you're like, oh my god, I've been, like I've I've been doing this to myself. Yeah. Right. We've been allowing this in our lives. We've been settling for this in our lives and. And uh, so, I mean, that's what I appreciated most about about coming to your event, which is yeah. what I think uh, other people might might share the same sentiment. But, but yeah, the game changer weekend, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's uh, yeah, you hit a bang on. Like those are that's a great comment about you know me just I, I've I've just done some of those things and other things like I'm still going through as well. Like 
you know, just because I teach about organization and balance, all that stuff, doesn't mean that I'm 100% organized. Like, I just, I just know that the more simple my life and the more organized things are, it just seems to, the life seems to get easier. So, you know, it's, it's a progression, right? You know, you work up from five to six to seven, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's I think cool. it, it's, it's really refreshing and it's, I think it's much needed just because uh, this world is just full of fakes, full of, you know, it's just impersonators. <laughs> yeah. Where you see them on stage and you see them backstage and they're two, they're two completely different people. Yeah. So I think the hardest work is to truly be authentic and not just use the word authenticity and, and things like that but actually be it and live it yeah so it's not the fact that you're just that you preach it that you teach it but you're actually you yourself do it and it's hard work to actually do it yeah yeah it, it is it is hard work but it's worth it mm-hmm. right you know some people they they've shun away from doing this work for so long because they know it's difficult mm-hmm. you know that they, they may not jump in because they're afraid of the questions that'll get asked and even more afraid of you know maybe some of the the answers that may come out but the ones who are brave and courageous to kind of step into that knowing that it leads to much greater things then that's that's what they're looking for right Mm -hmm. yeah so how do you how do you deal with uh life balance now because obviously the work that you do is to help people in their lives Mm -hmm. and for you, for you to be working on your own life helps you create the work for other people's lives. Yeah. You know, it's like like the material, the tools, the insights come from you doing it to yourself. Yeah. So it's almost like like there's no separation, you know? Can you, like the books that you read, the, the things that you're implementing, the challenges that you take on, like this race and all these competitions and stuff like that. Like yeah. all of these are analogies. All of these are proven grounds. And all of these are kind of just ways to experiment with what your your theories are and kind of directly impact how you're going to have your your next event, your your next coaching client, your next coaching session, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's no like it's it's all part of one. It's all thing. intertwined. Yeah, that's kind of what I go what I go through. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I asked that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, the the way I deal with balance is, you know, I, I just take that exercise and you know, I just I, I look at my my previous completed exercise and I, I look at it pretty regularly, but I I actually complete the exercise. Probably every quarter, right? So when I do the next exercise, a review. I don't look at my previous exercise at that time. I just do the exercise, and after I do the exercise, then I just kind of compare it. So I actually did a presentation um, a couple of weeks back. This was the first time that, you know, like I shared, you know, a lot of extras, what I don't normally share. Mm-hmm. So this is me jumping more into, you know, the whole real and authentic stuff. You know the, you know the the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you know, I, I it was this was the first time where I really took an in depth look at all of my exercises across the board and what was going on at any given time, which led to certain um, results on my life balance wheel. So it was interesting to see some of the patterns that was showing up. You know, just before going back to work, um, being back to work for two years and. You know, the same things are being affected, right? So if you don't switch something up, that pattern is just going to repeat itself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you don't, if you <laughs> don't, if you don't work on practicing the new habit, an old habit always shows up, right? And the the measuring, right? You're like you're using that as a tool to measure, and it's self knowledge. Yeah. Without without journaling or without doing exercises, without doing tools like this. How can you how can you know your progression or regression? Yeah, that's been you know? a huge one for me. Just just tracking things. Yeah, like you know, writing it. Where are you at? Where do you want to go? Where have and you then been? track your progress mm-hmm. because without the pro- like, and that's how I got you know most of my results with you know my physical body and with you know person development and just being just organized writing it down my measuring it just by tracking keeping it. a log of everything like mm-hmm. when i'm training for my races like i need to know my pace i need to know this i need to know that like this may seem like effort to people 
But you don't have to go track ten things right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Maybe track one thing. One. What are Just you? Do what are you thing. eating? How much are you drinking? Yeah. Whatever it is, right? Just track. I'm drinking three liters of water every single day. Right. Or something. Exactly. Like whatever. So yeah, and the one exercise you shared with me has been absolutely gold for me. The well-being checklist. Another just kind of simple thing. What What are you doing in your life that makes you that makes you feel good? What makes you feel happy? And you know, you, you just do more of it. For, yeah. For, and, for people who don't know what the well-being checklist is, it's just well-being how you define it. Which is for me, it's it's what makes me feel good in a day, mm-hmm. and that might mean something completely. That yeah. might be completely different for somebody else because who are like who are we to impose our beliefs of what well being is? You know, if you think well being means something else, specifically physically or health wise, whatever, it's, it's you. But what are ten things that allow you to have a high sense of well well being in the day? And just track it on a daily basis and make sure you get to those things. That exercise and, has been gold. And then when you track it and you see how you're actually taking care of yourself, how you're taking care of your well-being, it's going to reveal a lot of truth to you and about cor- how well, you, how much you value yourself. And correlate that to how you're feeling. And then correlate it with your business results. Yeah. Right? And your relationships else. and anything else. Like So it's, it's very, very important. Yeah. You know? So we, we, we talk regularly. And, you know, this, this is one thing that we talk about. This, every, every week we, we, we talk about, you know, our, our well-being. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, so, and sometimes I lose track. Sometimes uh, life, yeah. life happens, things come off schedule or, like, there's a big event or whatever it is. And, like, I, I lose track. And, and, and you, gotta, you just got to find your way back to it but i've been doing it for so many years now and there's a direct correlation yeah how i feel how my relationships are my business results all of that yeah with how high my well-being is or how low it is yeah so yeah uh so game changer weekend is coming up what in a couple of days so april Uh, a couple weeks april 26th and 27th okay the the weekend um in uh the end of april cool yeah in Oakville. So it's going to be in Oakville. Where, where can they find the information on that? So they could either email. I'll give my email address. It's mike at happyhealthyandwise.me. Um, the information about the uh, weekend is also on my website, which is www.happyhealthyandwise.me. And there cool. will be a, a, a link there to the Game Changer weekend. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So definitely, guys... Take a look at Mike's website, see what he's been doing, follow him on Facebook, check his stuff out, subscribe to the weekly newsletter, which is the weekly Start Me Up, yeah. which every Monday, <clears throat> which comes out every Monday. Yeah. Um, and make sure, you, make sure you kind of, you be open to the questions, be open to the idea of maybe, you know, you just, maybe you just need to put yourself in a situation where you're in the environment that you can give to yourself and find some new awareness. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'll, you'll find new opportunities to grow, new opportunities to let go of stuff and maybe take on things that actually will bring you some more fulfillment, fun, and, and happiness in your life. So I really encourage you guys to take a look at what Mike is up to, see if you can come to the Game Changer weekend, and I hope you come on again soon. Thanks. And if anybody wants uh, uh, any of the exercises that we talked about, like the like that life balance wheel, as I said, that was an exercise that has transformed my life. And it's just a simple, simple exercise. So uh, I encourage you, if, if anything that we've talked about today, any of these exercises we brought up, you know, if you want any of them, um, just fire me over an email, and I'll be more than happy to, to send over the exercise to you. And, you know, I can, you know, have a chat with you if you want about... Uh, some of the results that you mm-hmm. you came out of that. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I'm really glad that we did this. Very yeah. genuine, relaxed, open-ended conversation. I didn't really have a plan <laughs> about what we were going to talk about. No, hey, look at that. But I feel like it ended up pretty, pretty, yeah. uh, pretty good. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. It was oh. a good talk. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a great one, everyone. Take care. See ya.